Deputy. You ready to talk to me now? You and I both know you saw something. We're way past claiming you didn't. I only know what I thought I saw. Well, describe it for me. The wasp man. The wasp man? It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's scary stories my older brother used to tell me when I was a kid about a monster, a head like a wasp, and a mouthful of stingers instead of teeth. He said that it would come get me in my sleep and that, and that it would sting me to death. So you're saying that the uh, the wasp man attacked you both times here and earlier in the patrol car? I, I'm not saying that that's what it was, OK? I mean, they didn't see it. It's not on the videotape. This this can't be real. Well, I think maybe it can. You just, just relax a minute. Excuse me. Scully, we came on this case looking for a werewolf, right? Oh, you did. That's correct. Hyman Escalera claimed he was attacked by a werewolf, and the wounds that he sustained would seem to bear that out, right? And then uh, Wetzel over here sees a wasp man with stingers for teeth, and he gets a bite mark that you say is irrefutably insect-like, right? No, that's not exactly. And then another eyewitness claims she sees Freddy Krueger. Miss Scully, what if, what if we're dealing with one creature, one entity, that when it attacks appears to you as your worst nightmare? Fear. Maybe that's what this thing feeds on. OK, well, for the sake of this argument, yeah. how would one catch something like that? <laughs> Probably by, by figuring out how it chooses its prey. I mean, there, it seems to spread like a contagion, doesn't it? One person's fear becomes the next. There's a definite chain of victims. Tonight, it went from Mrs. Guerrero to Wetzel and the sketch artist, and then from the sketch artist to Shantara Gomez, and then... Shantara Gomez back to Wetzel, right. but you're missing someone, Mulder. Who? Edie. Stephen Edie. They're a part of this chain, too, and, and according to your theory, they would have been attacked, right? 